Welcome to week 6 lectures. We are continuing with design of general purpose industrial helical gear unit uh, reduction unit. It is part 4, the last part, and this is the last lecture where we shall mostly uh, recapitulate that how the design of a gear unit is done. Now, outline of this lecture is very simple. First of all, the in assembly view, we have not shown yet the bill of material. So, that I will show you first and next we will discuss about the how the gearbox are designed. Somewhat we will, we will recapitulate, I shall speak about the essential steps. Now, this the, this is the um, view, plan view, elevation and side view although not completed, but the gearbox what we have designed in, in the last phase that is considering total reduction ratio 24.42 keeping the input set and, and the intermediate set same only the output gear has changed for that the gearbox will look like this. And um, I, I would say this gearbox with a little uh, refinement here and there can be sent for manufacturing. Okay. So, after completing this drawing, then on the assembly drawing there will be some notes of course, that uh, it, they, there should have linkage that next what we need to do and uh, what are the essential part. And on the assembly drawing there will be some major dimensions first of all which is not given here, which first of all it is overall size of the gear unit, center distances and the this is say for foundation bolt we have 6 numbers as I told that this is a piece like that this is about 127 millimeter width and length is 250 millimeter. Okay. That sort of 3 base will be there which will be machined and these bolt holes are 12 millimeter holes are there for M12 bolt with 6 bolt we, will, we can put in on the ground or on a structural frame. right? So, some informations will be there not it will be not just like that some information will be there, but along with that we need also the bill of material. So, this this typical drawing and the scale and projection all are mentioned here next we will come to the bill of material sample bill of material. In fact, if we want to give the details of all items it will look something like this what is shown here it will look like this. So, we have to give this item number each and every item number here this is this drawing and this drawing is same here it is of course, it is 3 stage gearbox more components are there and bevel gear and as I described earlier in bevel gear there are also possibility that we can put either set 1 or I set 2. Here also either we can put solid shaft or hollow shaft that is why the number and components are more. It will be here in this in our case it will be less of course, but not much I have not shown other things I have not marked at all. But bill of material means that you have to give the item number each and every component. There are two ways one is that you can put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 etcetera all the components that means say suppose if we consider the bolt here all will be of equal size because they are being put like this. So, for that will be only one item number but the number of may be we require 24 and bolt, nut and spring washer. 
So, what is done actually this bolt will have a specific length. So, that will get one item number the, the somewhere uh, some other places say for example, the similar bolt we are using here also for this cover, but this is having different length. So, that will get another number and if you calculate suppose here it we need 12, here we may need 6, 6 12 plus 4 16 other side 16. So, 32 bolt size, but if you come to the nut washer and spring washer they are of same size that they, they will get another number and then we will here 12 and here 16 sorry um, uh, 32 12 plus 32 44 knot 44 washer or if we use the double washer here bottom and top here of course, only one washer here double the number will increase and that will be that will come in the list. Now, while we are listing it will be like that. So, when I uh, teach the student then I say that you take the component which you need to put uh, consider the first one first item give the item number one. Okay. But actually it is not that it is normally it is on the best of this what type of component it is. Say machining means casting and it is own manufacture we cannot buy it. So, maybe that is carrying 100 series that is carrying the 100 series. So, that means bottom housing may be 101 top um, upper one may be 102 like that say bearing those are bought out item that is carrying 400 series. So, bearing might be 402, 412, 400 like that which is given here and say gears those are say 200 series. Similarly, the saps and other or maybe the small covers and etcetera that is 300 series, but alternatively as I told that you can take the component which you are which is the main component and the first component it is like that. Of course, in that way first components will be the shafts finish shaft then perhaps you have to put the bearing then you have to take the key then bearing then gears etcetera it may come in that way. We need not follow strictly the assembly sequences. Simply, what I have done, this is again sample, I have not given all the item numbers. Say, item number 1 is assigned here, you can see this number 1 is assigned to lower housing, that means this one is number 1. Okay. And how many we need? Only 1. And then this is material cast iron, simply cast iron I have written, but you can specify graded cast iron or something else you can mention there. Okay. And then this column, so we have to make such columns item number here, then the part drawing number all details drawing will have separate part number and there itself sometimes it is written it will be assembled to some component of course, for housing many many components will come over that you may not need it, but this part drawing number you have to mention here in the bill of material and this lower housing then uh, this is the description then number 2 is the bottom housing number 2 here uh, sorry I yeah lower housing. So, this is one actually this is one this and this is the same and upper housing means this one two this is upper housing. So, you have to put it like this not like this what I am showing and uh, this is cast iron here I have given the heat treatment and ground, but practically this ground is not required in this case it will not be required, but 
you can uh, not hit treatment there might have a note or you can leave it no note is required because on the details drawings there will be note because after casting sometimes we you may require to for the stress relieving another heating and normal cooling that might be there or you can forget about that no note is required for this if there is some place special remarks that you can put there itself in the column of rem, uh, remarks and spe specifications materials all materials details are given in the detail drawing but still it is a customary to mention here the what are the material okay next we come to the input shaft number 3 that means this will be number 3 so input shaft that is um, e n 19 instead of that the what is the indian standard uh, specification that i have written here this is 40 cr 1 mo 3 that means chromium is 1 percent molybdenum is 3 percent and 0.4 percent is the carbon that is the basic eh? and here we have not written any comment because it is not required all comments are given on the detail drawing okay then uh, this four here uh, as if the i have mentioned here taper roller bearing but this is a just sample in the, this case you can write the ball bearing and this number instead of that say we can put skf that is the company number or simply you can forget it, this that we can put in this bearing number we are using 6206 no 05 6208 and 6209 so this all bearings can come together and each we need in 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 our design in a pair so, 6205 we will need 2 numbers, 6208 we will need 2 numbers and 6209 we will need 2 numbers. Okay. So, that we can put it here number of is 2 instead of 2, two, two. this number will come over here, here it will come over here like this. Eh? Okay. So, that can be given then what we have taken that intermediate shaft, intermediate shaft is this one that number is 8 and this material also mentioned here what it is and gear and pinion teeth are hobbed and preheat treated this note i have written here but not necessarily all notes will be in the details just to show that how to write the any special remarks that you can put it here so that is for the manufacturing items but if you come to this say bolt and other things suppose uh, the bolt hex head say this this you can put say 14 yeah, okay and what we need this is uh, we can count here uh, 1 2 3 4 uh, then 5 6 7 8 so if you give it 4 1 2 3 4 4 4 8 plus 4 12 so we will simply write here 12 and these are not m10 we have taken simply m5 okay and then this you can mention if it is uh, ordinary one perhaps for m5 there will be 1 or 1.25 is the pitch that you can mention there and also you can mention the length in this case this length will be around 30 millimeter we can measure it is in again in the multiple of 5 normally okay so that you can mention and this number of you have to put 12 but we have here also the same bold so this is say 15 or say 16 okay so it can come here 16 then bold again hex head or whatever this it can write here and this we will need totally 6, 6, 12 plus uh, 4, 16. So, we need 32 
and here that this these are also m 5 into say 1.25 into length will be much less it is around uh, 6, 6, 12 say 15 millimeter and that we need 32 numbers. Then come to the knot, this knot again we need for m 5 and 1.25, but this number now this 32 plus 12 44 uh, sorry we need we will need only for this 12 for this we do not need knot. So, we need 12 knot for m 5. If we think of the washer then we need for this 32 we need 32 washer and for this 12 if 2 24. So, suppose this 17 will come then here we will write washer and the spring this is a spring washer we will use here okay. and that spring washer is 24 plus 32 we will um, that is 56 okay. then, then 56 we will write that m 5 this is for m 5. So, 56 numbers in that way we have to make the bill of material that bill of material sometimes it is furnished with the drawing, but not essential you can keep a note that will have separate identity number and there itself you can make this bill of materials all components should be furnished there. So, for cover that will have uh, different identity number say for example, here this cover and this cover is same that might get say 19 okay. whereas, this is 20, this is 21, this is 22, this is 23 and that detail drawing will be there and direct number will be there. So, I think I have given some idea about how to make the bill of material and the key uh, of the this drawing. So, this is I would say this is the end of uh, the lecturing on the uh, design part of a gear unit. Okay. Now, we shall come into the other part. Now, we shall simply recapitulate how this gear box is designed. Now, it is as you have seen uh, we have started the gear box designing from the third week lectures third, fourth, fifth and sixth completely devoted for the design of a just gear unit. You can say the, the, that a single problem we have solved, we have calculated many, many things, we have considered many, many things, we have drawn the detailed view etcetera, etcetera. And um, uh, in this pro designing such gear box first step is that First of all, you have to know that for what you need the gearbox and what type of it might be helical, it might be vehicle, etcetera. That decision will be done there, and then you either you have the uh, prime mover size, that is the power and uh, the um, shaft size, and uh, etcetera, or you have that how much torque you need to transmit at a particular rpm say it might be the in the output uh, range say for example you are using this gearbox for a um, bell conveyor so you know that what will be the um, rpm of the bell conveyor say 200 so it will be 200 rpm and you know the how much is the torque so there itself you can calculate the how much power it required and then probably you can multiply the, with some factor depending on the severity of the operations. Say mul multiply with say medium shock you multiply by 1.5. So, in that case what will that will give directly the what is the power of the uh, prime mover. Now, you can select a suitable rpm of the prime mover 
For example, if you go for electric motor, normally a 1500, 1450 or 1500 is a good value because most of the motors, AC motors, they are made of this RPM, general purpose. So, that means 1500 to 200. So, this is becoming um, only 7.5 reduction and for that 7.5 then you have to decide can you make it in a single stage 7.5 can be made in a single stage, but 1500 rpm and 7.5 probably is, is single stage will not be good. Single stage normally we should not get if the rpm is high not more than 6. So, maybe for 7.5 you will look for two stage gearbox and in that case you will think of making it 2.5 into rest maybe 3, 2.5 in first stage or maybe 2.25 in the first stage rest in the second stage like that. Okay. So, you can decide about that part whether it will helical gear, spurred gear or bevel gear that decision you have to take depending on the severity the op operations and normally gearbox are made of helical, bevel and uh, not straight tooth are preferred normally. Okay. So, then you select the transmission ratio at first stage and second stage and it is better always when you are starting calculation from the input size you should know what is the nominal torque that simply divided by what the output torque divided by, by the what is the reduction ratio you are choosing. Then depending on the severity you can multiply with multiply with some with some by some factor with the nominal torque for gear design when you coming to the shaft design this factor will be different when you are selecting the bearing that factor will be different and it is in that way these are chosen. There is no proper I may not get any guide book because always your load spectrum will not will match with the other one you that needs some experience and some recommendations. Now, next step you will design the gears. Okay. Now, while you are designing the gears there are uh, uh, different type of formula is suggested by the book in many cases you will find this is simply it is calculated how much a tooth can take the load. Okay. So, that is one possibility other possibility is that better you use this formula we will directly arrive into the module. Now, torque is known we will consider the design torque nominal torque multiplied by some factors. Then we have selected some number of teeth because we have selected the ratio initial stage from the recommendation we can select also the helix angle. And as this tooth number and helix angle is known then we can calculate this y modified uh, form factor calculating the formative number of teeth which is this z dash is equal to z by cos cube beta that we can calculate. So, these are known width factor we can choose the lubrication condition and lubrication this factor we can choose the material available material usually this who are manufacturing um, gears and gear manufacturer they are having 2 3 materials for premium 2 3 materials for gear depending on the load and other you can choose and depending on the heat treatment which you can go if it is a ground you can go for one it is like that okay also there is another factor as i told that y form factor into strength of material that on that basis you can decide whether the mating pair pinion or gear to be designed. Okay. But there is a question how to take this C V value at the initial stage C V values it will be say 3 by 3 plus pitch line velocity initially we do not know module how we can take this one, but it really does not matter. So, we start with take simply 0.5 this factor without knowing this just take 0.5. Then you put in the first calculation 
once you calculate it you will get a module suppose you get this module is 2.35 so nearest um, standard is 2.5 go that go for that and calculate the pitch line velocity calculate v then again you refine it and put it here and get this one for that you may find you are getting next 2.45 and still this will do suppose you get 2.6 still you can come back to 2.5 simply increasing this a little bit or increasing this a little bit but suppose uh, with this value with the new value of the module what you have got this value in changing in such a way you have arrived into 2.8 then go for 3 and recalculate it will take hardly 10 15 minutes so you can decide on that what module you can select at that stage okay so next that uh, already this i have discussed but you need to find out the wear load capacity of this one for which this is based on the hard contracts theory on that basis if you just simply put the number of teeth here you will get this factor and this is from the material considerations and this is the geometric diameter etcetera this is the working width and these values all this put you can find out the where what is the wheel load capacity of this material okay uh, of, of this gear set and then so this is the formula already discussed and then that would be considered that would be compared with the probable dynamic load probable dynamic load will be the it is it is a it is usually normal load acting on the teeth plus some increment and in the load due to the dynamic effect so that is given fn by fi there are various formula proposed by various uh, gear researcher uh, buckingham he has uh, put a formula that is widely used, but that has been further uh, um, refined. But for the general purpose, what one can consider that Fd is equal to the Ft into V, uh, sorry, Cv or Fn into Cv. Simply, one can take that things, and that Cv factor that depends on what is the finish of the gears which I have discussed earlier. So, in that way you can easily calculate F D and then your F D this you need to follow. What the capacity from well load consideration what we have calculated it should be greater than equal to 1.15 times of the FD calculated FD probable load. If not satisfactory then first thing you can increase the hardness of the gears, but while you are increasing the hardness of the gears if that needs the grinding then you have to think twice alternatively you can try if the difference is small you can try with increasing the width increasing even the module okay but if you find the difference is very high there is no way you have to go for heat treatment you can of course size the uh, increase the size of the uh, teeth others increasing the module but that will not be a good design hmm? you have to go for heat treatment then okay then the step 3 to 5 is that first if well, after designing the gears then you have to make the layout first because you do not know where is the support we have only selected the design the gears and pinion and then best thing we should consider the intermediate shaft suppose it is a two stage then intermediate shaft is one if it is a three stage then two intermediate shaft take any of that and then you put the gear like this say here we have put the pinion and here the first stage gear second stage pinion some gap what we have mentioned and then uh, I think it is there. So, we can directly go into that. So, this is 
bearing you can think of this what type of bearing depending on the load etcetera maybe up to 10 kilowatt you can go for only the ball bearings deep group ball bearings and these are the gap are mentioned and you can select what might be the series usually it is 18 to or maybe 15 to 25 you can consider you consider anything here and then take these dimensions and then only you can calculate what will be the load coming on the bearing because now you can calculate from the torque what is the load acting at the contact points and from there as you know the bearing distances and uh, distances from the mid of the gear mid of the pinion to different bearings you can calculate all these loads. Okay. But these loads why you are calculating better to consider resolve into two planes horizontal plane and vertical plane because uh, resultant is always not in the same directions. So, it is advisable to calculate these separately for horizontal plane and vertical plane and then while you are coming to a particular section you just find out the resultant for the bearing also it is done in the same way and then we go for the next stage. You can see this resultant in one is in 13.25 degree other is an 11.57 degree so, these are the resultant. Okay. And then as I as already discussed that we normally uh, lock the bearing if it is a ball bearing if it is a taper load bearing you cannot do it like this you have to lock from the both sides taper load bearing but for spherical roller for ball bearing we can do lock in one side this is intentionally locked in this right because here the radial loads are less so that you have to decide and then you can see this all loads we have put it there and then uh, if you think of the sap design in case of gearbox there is a little scope that you could design the sap first then then you can put it there particularly if the pinion is integral with that so you have to from the size of the pinion then if it is integral then you have to stiff down to the bearings and there is a little scope that you can design the shaft and can put it there. So, normally what is done after making the layout and calculating all the loads bending moment shear force diagram everything is done for the shaft and then using this formula we have already shown this based on the maximum shear stress theory and we can already it is discussed. But very quickly you can see all these are calculated for the critical section and then the factor of safety over the yield strength of that particular material is verified. Now, how to find out the uh, critical section? What we have to do for uh, we have to compare with the diameter and the factor of safety at a particular section that is severity suppose there is a keyway factor of safety will be more there is a step factor of safety will be something in between there is a gear factor of safety will be less. But if you calculate near the say suppose intermediate shaft at the middle of the pinion there will be the maximum bending moment, but there is also the maximum diameter and factor of safety in that way is not very high because this is a gear tooth. But if you come to the mid of the gear there it is a it is a, the keyway is there and uh, although the uh, bending moment is reduced, but diameter is also reduced. So, you that section may be severe than the section mid section of the pinion. Also, in between the gear and pinion 
there at, at the step that section may be the critical one. So, that you have to find out using this all making all such calculations and using this one. And finally, you can suggest okay, this section is maximum. So, I would suggest for suppose you select 2 3 sections from the experience and then simply you calculate this part alternative stress where is the alternative stress is the highest that that will be the critical section and you calculate the factor of safety for that section if it is the ill strength of the material what you have selected it is known if this fs is more than 2.5 then it is satisfactory 2.5 or more it is satisfactory usually you will find the problem in the output shaft because that is a separate material and medium carbon steel in our design also i have shown later we change that from c42 we change it to c45 then step 7 layout of the shaft sub assemblies of all shafts then step 8 is full assembly plan view and top open elevation and side view step 9 detailed drawing of all components and last step wheel of materials and documentations uh, we have to make the report final report of the design calculation everything all documentation that i would say that is the last step of the gear design so within this six week lectures what we have learn that is we have just learned the basic of the design of the gears and a gear unit how it can be designed and that too with respect to only helical gear if we consider the bevel gear we will find new things how the loads on coming on the bearings how the loads are changing with the direction of rotation keeping the helix angle same if we change the helix angle then it will be different if we take the straight spar, it will be in one way and if we take the spiral bevel, it will be different. Okay. But one thing you should remember, if we go for say for, for example, if we take the first stage bevel, second stage helical, then in that case, it is better we should go for tipper roller bearing, so that sap does not move this way or that way because of the reasons contact of the bevel gear depends on do not allow the movement of the shaft in axial directions we have to keep it firm so you will find normally that is with the taper roller bearing whereas if you go for completely helical gear you can do one side locked and other side keep it free there are many many such issues which you will learn through experience and by no means i can give you all ideas through these lectures, but I only expect that uh, af after this six weeks of lecture, six weeks of this um, instruction, perhaps you have learned a little bit how the gear is designed, how the gear box is designed, but by no means I have gi given all the accurate um, say values of everything this is simply idea if when you will join in a company if you work in a company then you will find they have more much more informations so following those informations you have to do it even the you will find the formula is different that is given by some other uh, uh, the gear uh, cutting machines who are manufacturing the gear cutting machines they have proposed something Okay. And uh, material specifications also you may find that if you buy the material from country X, country Y for the same material it might be slightly different heat treatment you should be very careful usually that is done by the other party. Okay. So, you have to keep a observation that heat treatment has been done properly forging that has been done properly. So, many many issues are there by no means I can give you all it is not possible it is for your experience. So, this is only basic knowledge. Now, there are two others 
weeks. Now, seventh week we will learn little bit about the gear tooth corrections and eighth week we will learn something of special gearing. So, I hope that uh, you have learned a little bit about the gears and by the end of this eight week lectures you will have an idea about the design of the gears, how it works and what are the some special type of gears. Okay. So, I thank you for your attention to the gear unit design. I have completed the gear unit design with this lecture. Thank you once again.